Welcome to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, where amazing things happen. Our goal is to help build, repair, and restore healthy relationships. But tonight, we are really thankful for all of you guys who watched and shared and who are part of this community. Tonight, we are going to talk about why rich couples don't cheat. I know you say that's a bold... All of a sudden, the person is not so positive and it, it may come off as sarcastic, may call, come off as being condescending. They may put you down, not necessarily directly saying, oh, you are not this or that, but it can come off kind of on the sly. Those are all indicators that maybe this is something that red flag. Yeah. Re- remember that red flag. And, and it may come in different fa- shapes, different forms, different ways or how they actually. But if it's not positive and encouraging and building you up, consider that a part of the dishonesty because everybody puts their best face forward when you're dating. That's the most deceptive time in your relationship because you always want to portray the best parts of yourself. And if you have indicators or you've seen red flags that make you go, hmm, that's something that I don't like. I want to do this. Yeah, go ahead. So what's the difference between a red flag and unhealed or unresolved, unpacked trauma? I'm going to give Mm -hmm. you the difference. In most cases, a red flag is something that you see in the other person that goes against your values your boundaries, and your goals. Those are red flags. Mm -hmm. Things that you can see right away. It's like, oh man, I like indoors. He likes outdoors. Or Mm -hmm. I'm a believer. He's not a believer. Those are are red flags. Unpacked pain or trauma is something that you feel Mm -hmm. inside when you're in their presence or when they do something or when they say... People like to call them triggers or hot buttons. So we have to be careful that we don't mistake a red flag. And sometimes they can interlap and overlap. But we want to be able to differentiate between what is a red flag, which is something that I have to decide what I'm going to do moving forward. Or is this something inside of me that's making me not be open to the process of dating? Wow. Because 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 dating is about the first thing is getting to know the person. Right. Before you can date, you need to be doing some just conversating and communicating and just to see. Because even in the process of just vetting this person, you may decide, I don't like him or and, and, I don't like her. And if you think about those things that are red flags. Those are the things that you are seeing that makes you hey, think. Hey, thanks for the love. That, that, that the makes love. you think, hey, this is something that I need to be paying attention to as I'm deciding if this is somebody I want to keep pursuing or keep going down that road with. So it may look a little bit like this. Do they can try to control your decisions and things that you do or how you maybe dress or how you may interact or try to... And especially, with, is, I like what you said just a little bit ago about the personal trauma. Think of those as inward. Those are things on the inside of you. Maybe something happened in your past that is a trigger for you, like you you put it. Right. But the red flag is something that you see outwardly that triggers that thing inwardly. Right. And, and you and I, we always laugh and joke and say that everybody is a little crazy, but your mm-hmm. crazy can't be combustible. <laughs> Your, your crazy has to complement each other. And some people are just, you're not going to be compatible. Sometimes they're crazy and you're crazy. When you mix it together, it's just like a bomb. <laughs> and so don't ignore that. That feeling of, you know, one of the things that's important to understand about understanding the difference is trust your, trust the Holy Spirit inside of you. Trust that little voice that's saying, mm-mm. Danger, danger. Like I always talk about when I saw you, it was something about him that made me want to know more. And if if it's something that is like, oh, no, nah, right. something about that person doesn't make me feel safe. You don't sit. Doesn't make me feel good. Hey, thanks for joining us. Hey. Please share the video. Please share, share, share. Um, so if there is something about them that makes you feel uncomfortable, 
Don't ignore that. Listen to that. Because if you ignore that, then all the other signs that you get, you're going to ignore those as well. Right, exactly. So when you start dating someone, I think about this one, this next one. This is talking about the D and DUIs as far as dishonesty. This was not be being dishonest. I'll give you a real world example. When oh, we Lord. were dating. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. When we were dating, <laughs> there was a guy that I was in high school with. And this person was an entrepreneur. And he was really focused on trying to get his business started. And he had bought a gas station. And he had decided to build his gas station while he was still in high school. And he needed help. You know, and I remember. This is a trigger for me. <laughs> this is a personal trauma. That's a, this is a good example. And I was supposed to go on a date with Renee and I was supposed to meet up with her. And I was late. I still met up with her, but I was late. And at this time, this was post or pre cell phones and you don't have yeah. the quick means of communication or anything like that. And what you tell your side why it was a trigger. Because I was used to people rejecting me. I was used to people not doing what they said. And for so long, Gil had always did what he said. And so when he didn't do what he said one time, y'all hear me, ladies. He did what he said all the time for months and months and months and months. And so one time he didn't do what he said. And I had took everything we had and I had put it in a box and I was going to break up with him for one. For perceived. One, I would say even perceived infraction. Because it really was an infraction. Yes, I was late. No, but... you just didn't come. You yeah. didn't make it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Let's set the record straight. <laughs> um, it was not that he just was late. He did not arrive because he was... But then I provided the explanation yeah. to yeah. you. I, I did not lack. I wasn't lying. I didn't lack the transparency. But Renee had a trigger of inconsistencies in people that she was in relationship with prior to me that... Guess what? That stirred up something on the inside of her. Like, oh, here we go again. Yes. And so we have to be careful that when we see something one time in someone that has consistently showed us something positive, that we don't erase all of the good that they did because of something inside of us. Now, looking back on that now, I can tell you the reason why that bothered me was because I was used to being rejected. I was used to being lied to. I was used to being disappointed. But that wasn't Gil's fault. That was in me. Right. And so we have to always ask ourselves, what do you see more of? Do you see them keeping their word and doing what they say and um, being a person of integrity? Like we talk about being rich. Are they resilient? Do they have integrity? Do, are, do they have compassion? Do they walk in humility? If they're doing that all the time. Right. And then one time they are human. They drop the ball. Yeah. They drop the ball. And you I'm in a whole relationship. So... That would be more than that's not a red flag. That is a personal past trauma. trauma. Personal trauma. Now, personal trauma, like we're saying, personal trauma triggers the red flags. It's up to you to decide are you going to pay attention to the red flags and to be proactive with them? Well, or in are this you case, it wasn't that, it, that was yeah. not a red flag. That was my personal right. trauma yeah. reacting to you being human. And so we have to make sure that we're going to lead with grace and understanding. Because, you know, we talk about a woman's role is to submit and to help. And a man's role is to lead and to love. And so we have to make up in our mind, what are we going to lead with? Right. You know, I, I can't throw in my godmother's life. So you're going to break up with him because of one thing. Thank you so much for the hearts and the love. We love you guys. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for joining. Thank you so much. We're so glad you're here. So as And, and that kind of spills into the you. And when we talk about a DUI, when it talks about dating in this episode, that we're talking about unresolved baggage. Now, we all have things that happen to us when we are growing up, good and bad, mm -hmm. experiences, past hurts, feelings, pains, all those things that happen just as about as we just live in life. But if it's unresolved and this thing comes into your present relationship, this is someone who has not tried to even resolve these things or they're still dwelling, still living in the past. How many times have you dated someone and you feel like you're having to make up for someone that came before you. Yeah. Mm. If that has happened to you, give us a thumbs up. And how do you deal with that? How do you go through with it and say, you know what? How If this is somebody I'm deciding to spend some time with, how can I help them unpack some of the things that they have unresolved, some of the hurts, some of the pains? And this can take on any shape, 
It could be just, like you said, trauma, personal pain or anything like that. It can also be something that is a little bit more serious, you know, in the form of addictions and things like that, that we talked about in some of the other episodes. But that's something that we want to bring to light that you cannot ignore. Yeah, it can and, be and a red part flag. Of understanding that the biggest thing about understanding the difference between the two is most of the things that affect us in relationship start with us. Mm-hmm. It starts with the reflection in the mirror. And so when we can navigate that well, if I know I'm human and I'm frail and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to fall, then guess what? I'm going to give you the same freedom to do that. Right. And so when you're just getting to know someone, what normally makes relationships in in the beginning of the dating stage is the red flags. It's like, oh, no, that person don't keep their word. That person always trying to control on, what I'm their, doing. They're always on their phone. They're, they're, not, they're not being 100% transparent and honest and those types of things. That's the D. That's the dishonesty part. Yeah. And so a part of it is understanding that the most important thing about the whole dating relationship is that it's discovery. In the beginning of the dating, it's just getting to know each other. It's being it's being curious. It's asking questions and what's your favorite color and who's your favorite family member? I mean, that may seem trivial, but the it, longer it the matters. journey Every, goes all of it in matters. and the more you ask questions, the more you talk about your childhood and your past, and, and you ain't got to go into your deep dark secrets in the beginning. But the someone's willingness to be vulnerable in the beginning is going to let you know if you should go further. Oh, absolutely. Someone's willingness to not be vulnerable, they don't want to ask you no questions. They're they don't they never make time for you. That's not somebody that you want to give your time and attention to. Right. You know, we have to make sure that we don't ignore the obvious things. So the red flags are a big part of it, but it's also and we talk about it. It's so important that you work on you as an individual before you get into a relationship with somebody else. Because if I don't know, like we, I mean, we were 21. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Oh, we're still trying to figure out life. Yeah, we, we still haven't figured ourselves out. <laughs> and so therefore, to bring another person into that and to think you're going to be able to know how to do that, it's very unrealistic. And and, and we, the grace of God just covered us. I can look back on that now and say, oh, the reason why that bothered me was this. But at the moment, I was in my feelings. And so another part of helping you to unpack the pain of your past is to have people in your life that you can go to that love (coughs) God, love marriage, and love both of you enough to be honest with you. And like we talked about back in the day, your family were, or they were a part of the process of you dating. If you ignore the people who know you best and love you and care about you, that's going to send the message to the person that you're dating that you don't listen to the people that love and know you the best. So if you don't listen to them, that that opens you up for them taking it. Because it's like, to me, there should be a certain level of loyalty that you have to the people who've always been there that a person that just popped on the scene shouldn't be able to be have access to. And I think even when we talk about the unresolved things that are, as, let's call it baggage, and the things that we've been talking about tonight is... Those are topics and discussions that you should be having with the people that you're in this relationship with. Right. Because that's the real part of Mm -hmm. relationships. You know, it's fun to have activities and do things that are fun and you enjoy each other's company. But the time that you are spending together, like Renee was talking about, is the time that you should be discovering the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to know about it after you've walked down the aisle or after you've made this long-term commitment. Then all of a sudden you start finding out secrets. Yeah, and those secrets start coming out at the most inopportune time. And then you're wondering, what did I miss? Well, red flags. Yeah. You got to pay attention to them. And a part of it is because I think I was I was talking to someone and we were talking about the way these apps are. You know, you go from high to, hey, you're my soulmate. I just met you. I can't be your soulmate. I can't be the person. God did not create me for you. I don't know you. And so we have to have enough on both sides, men and women. You have to be sober enough to know that someone that just met you, I mean, you may have chemistry, you may have electricity, you may have lust, but you don't have what it takes to make a long-term decision about this person and you just met them. That takes time. Oh, yeah. That takes seeing them in different seasons and seeing them in different settings and seeing them around different people. Because if you meet someone 
in they don't want to be around you or your family or people who are important to you even if it's not your family but someone who has another type of influence not to say they're in control of you right but they have a voice in your life those right. are the people that you really want to say help me make this decision you may not say it actually soliciting right. help but this is someone that you are saying help me make this person this choice that what am i missing you know, and then that's where ultimately it's going to be up to you to decide if I'm going to invest my time, effort and energy in a long term relationship, whether you walk down the aisle or even date long term. Right. But you have to listen to the people who are around you, the good and the bad. And ultimately, yeah. yes, you're going to make the decision, but don't try to hold others responsible when your picker is broke. I'm that, just going to say it like that. that mean? When I say what, your what? picker is broke, if you keep finding yourself in relationships and you keep getting the same thing over and over and over again, and it ends badly or it ends in a way that you did not understand, they call that being insane. Yeah. When you are doing the same thing over and over and over and think you're going to get a different result, mm. you're insane. Yeah. So if you are making bad choices and bad decisions with people that you are trying to establish a long-term relationship with... And you keep seeming like you're running in this relationship circle, then maybe you need to reevaluate and start paying attention to the red flags that you see because you owe it to yourself. And sometimes, and in that case, that's not red flags. That's unresolved Baggage. trauma and pain. Yep. And a, a lot of it is sometimes we're afraid to be alone. You should like yourself enough, you should love yourself enough that you enjoy your own company and being. By yourself does not mean you're lonely. Some of my closest friends, and we've known each other for years, they're like my sisters, they're like my family. They're not saying they're not married, mm -hmm. but they're also not thirsty. They're also not, oh my God, I'm so lonely. Skin, oh my yeah. gosh, if I don't get because marriage is not for everyone. And that's understandable. And it's okay. It's it's okay to because to think that God created you for another person is very um it's very naive. God created you for himself first. He created you for himself. He created you for a purpose. And if this other person is going to help you fulfill that person, that purpose, then hey, great. But if you're going to be with someone that's going to take you off of your relationship, away from your relationship with God and away from your people. purpose, then guess what? That is a more than a red flag. That is turn um, the other way and, 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 and leave. Yeah, because you, you have to realize that. God put you in a family. He gave you relationships that you had before you were in a relationship with somebody else. I would say your cousins are like where you learn about relationships. Your cousins and your siblings. You're practicing for how you're going to be in a relationship with somebody else. And even the good and the bad in that. You know, everybody has different family members that some you're close to, some that you're not. That's understandable. That's just life. That's just being human. But on the same token, you have to decide where am I going to invest the time, effort, and energy into the relationships that feed you and feed them? It's a two-way street. There should be reciprocity. Because if you get heavy, if these, if it, the relationship gets to the point where you feel like you're the only one doing the work and the heavy lifting. You're going to get tired. Absolutely. You, because in your humanness, we are not designed to carry, carry another weight. person. No. No. We, it should be reciprocal. It should be things that you feed into them and they feed into you to help you walk out this thing called life. And then the last one we're going to talk about with red flags as far as when we talk about DUIs. If you just join us, thanks for hanging thanks out for with hanging us on out. this Saturday Yay. night. We'll let we're, you guys ask questions when yeah, we finish this yep, part. Yep. And then it's incompatible, incompatible values. Mm. Values, if your values are not lining up, let's just say it first and foremost, we believe we're followers of Christ. That's what we build our life upon. Everybody has their raising and they can choose and decide whichever path they want to walk on. But that's something that is a staple in our life. Right. What's Jesus the Christ. What are the staples in your life and what are the values that you hold true to be in a relationship? And if that person that you're with is the polar opposite or maybe not going down that road or even... Let's just say not even interested in the things that you're interested in when it comes to your personal values and how you see things and how you want to live your life. Red flag. Yeah. Red flag. Yeah. Because if you are thinking about that, if it triggers something for you, I think about we didn't grow up in church. We were both heathens. <laughs> <laughs> That's always so, it's, it's, fun, it's not funny that we were heathens, but we weren't always in love with the Lord. But no. now that we are, that is something that can be mutually attractive to the other person as well. 
your, let's just call it in, in today's vernacular, they'll just say your spirituality. Well, ours just happened to be Christ. Right. And, and, uh, and a part of it is you should be attracted to something other than their body parts and their features. Because that's going to fade and that's going to change. Like I said, when I saw Gil, there was something about him and that was like different and that it was like, hmm, what is, is something about him? There should be something inside of you. And like I said, we were not saved. We didn't know the Lord. But God predestined for us all to have a relationship with him. And His he, he there, there's a mark on all of us. He has a plan for all of us. And so that light that he puts inside of us, even if it's just a little bitty light, it's going to be there. And so I think that when we are connected and we have, God has a plan and a call in our life, that there's a way that we can just discern things. Don't ignore that. Don't it? Don't I always people when people say, "Oh, I'm dating so and so." I'm like, "Send me a picture. Let me see their eyes." You can look in people's eyes and see, <laughs> at least I can, and see darkness. And so that's why it's important to let other people that know, love you, respect you, care about you, be a part of the process. Now, make sure these people are in healthy relationships, because one of the things my godmother told me is, "Don't let somebody who ain't got no man tell you how to keep yours." Be careful that there. some people are just negative. Some people are just miserable. Some people are just bitter. We're not talking about going to those people to help you with the process. But it's people who, who love God, who, who love relationships, who love you and the person that you, you, you're trying to get to know. Because you need that. Because it's always amazing. Do you have friends that are in a good relationship? Or, or better yet, let's flip that. People who are not in a good relationship telling you how to have someone or how to be in a good relationship. No, they can't do it because they haven't achieved what they talked about. I think about my mom when we were sitting at the table when we first got together and my mom was trying to explain to us how to have a good marriage. And I stopped her right in the middle of her sentence and said, mom, you didn't have a good marriage. So how can you tell me how to have one? I wasn't being disrespectful. My mom has taught me to communicate to her. I was just speaking facts, as they say. So, and she said, you know what? You're right. And Renee is sitting there like, oh my God, no, my mother would have slapped me in my face. I didn't <laughs> grow up in the same kind of house Gil grew up in. But that is the kind of thing that we're talking about. So make sure you're surrounding yourself and listening and talking to people who are on the path that you are trying to be on. You're going to have naysayers. You're going to have negative people. You're going to have people who are not at a maturity level that they can discuss and talk about things on a, on a, uh, from a, a mature level, then guess what? Let them be silly. Let them be goofy. Let them be clowning yeah, don't and go, go on their way. But what are you trying to achieve for yourself? That's to me, that's a red flag should be for a red flag for you, but that's a personal trauma that they have that they're trying to get over. Right. So, and you have to be there for them and be there, not involved with them, but be there to say, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. You know, and, and even as people come in here and they have comments, hey. we see the, the positive comments and the ones that are just silly and nonsense. You know what? You can put it in there. That's fine. That's why we're not giving it any airtime because foolishness doesn't uh, doesn't even need to be aired. And, you know, a part of it is I'm sorry for your pain. Yeah, Because absolutely. when people out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you put a comment, it's a reflection of your heart. And so we, we're going to pray that God will continue to help us to grow. And that's why we're here. We are here to help us to have healthy, rich relationships. And that takes having someone. And for so many years, I felt like, well, you know, I got married at 21. And, you know, we've been married for over 35 years. Why should we talk to singles? Because if you are single seeking marriage, you need somebody who got some receipts. Everybody wants to talk about receipts. I see so many people talking about marriage and talking about relationships and they're single. We're not telling you what we read in a book. We're not telling you what our training is. We're sharing with you the reality of working with couples for 18 years, loving each other, and wanting to see people who look like us win in relationships. Because so many times we are showing and, and, and promoting negativity and uh, divorce and um, foolishness, foolishness and, and, and us deciding how we're going to come up with the rules to life. God already did that. And so this is at this place in the rich relationship refuge, it is a safe place for people who want to grow and thrive in God honoring relationships. I am not apologizing. I am not asking for anyone's permission. 
If that is not what you're looking for, there are billions of channels on YouTube that can feed you what you want to eat. But here, that's what we got at our table. That's what we're talking about. So we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. So we put it in the comments if there's something you want us to chime in on or give feedback on or, or even if you if have you, a, if, you, if have, you have something that is positive and encouraging that the community can benefit from by all means put it in the chat we appreciate you guys hanging out with us on and we show. appreciate you guys putting nonsense in there too because, because it's entertaining it is it is i'm looking at some of it i'm i'm entertained <laughs> I'm glad you entertained. See, I don't have on glasses. So last week I had on glasses. So I saw it. And so I realized that that is a part of this. Because in the reality of the of, of the world that we live in, it is so much easier to critique than it is to create. And what we're doing is we're trying to create something that's going to last. And so I want to ask, if you have a situation that you're trying to do, differentiate, is this a red flag? Or is this, or a, is this, is this a personal trauma? Put it in the chat. Put it in there because we want to help because so many times people don't have anybody to go to. They don't have anybody to talk to. Maybe like, like for us, our parents are deceased. We don't, we can't go to our parents. Right. And so people most, I feel like I learned a lot of, from people about what not to do. And so I have a desire to help people know what to do because I didn't have that, you know, and I had the attitude where I didn't get it. So forget everybody else. But I feel like because God so richly blesses my life and our relationship, mm -hmm. why would you not want to share that with someone else? And that's all we're trying to do. You know, we could keep it to ourselves and keep the things that God has showed us and that has been very beneficial to our relationship. We could be gatekeepers. And, and But, we know, we said, God put it on our heart to say, you know what? Do we have all the answers? Nope. No. No. We'll tell you that first thing. But, do we have a perfect marriage? But no. do we have things that we know can benefit someone in the uh, a state in their relationship that needs to get better or who just may not have that experience or may not just know or have someone to go to? That's who we are here for. So we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Yeah. I know time flies, man. It's already been almost 35 minutes that we've been on here. And, and we this is what we've been trying to do is come on. On a Saturday night, you know, everybody's out doing their thing and all that kind of stuff. This is something that we personally enjoy doing and, and, and coming in. And, and serving out with you, you all. And by all means, reach out to all the other channels and all the other stuff that we put out there because we want to hear from you. Yes. You know, this is just a quick moment in time that you can put in some of the comments or anything that you want to say that can build up, encourage other people. Or but even, also even answer a question because... The only questions that are not smart questions are the ones you don't ask. And sometimes the questions you may have, somebody <laughs> else may have. I love that. Yeah, we're talking about it. You, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to have to coin that term, flag collector, red flag collector. Oh, my God. That's, oh, that's like the blame thrower. Some people go through relationships. They're looking for red flags. Well, guess what? My godmother should tell me, you're going to find what you're looking for. If you're going in a relationship looking for red flags, don't date. You still got pain. If you're look, if pain. all you're doing is looking for red flags, then you have unpacked pain and unpacked trauma. And that kind of goes into something that we we were had a couple that we talked to today, and you're gonna see their episode next week. Yeah, we but, won't be here next week. No was, live next week, guys. There was something that was said that if the advice that they wanted to give, and I and you'll hear it next week, but the 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 crux of it was if you are looking for something specific. Write it down. Look at everything that you're looking for in this partner that you want, whether it's to go down the aisle or just to be in relationship with, and then compare yourself to that list and you become that list. Yeah, that's what the Lord gave me when I was a hairstylist. Because everybody would ask me, well, how do you know? Write the list mm. down, be specific, and then you become the list. Because so many times we're demanding from somebody else what we don't bring. Mm. Guess what? You're going to find what you are. And then on top of that, like you said, being a, a Miss, Miss T, being a, a flag collector, oh, be, we missed you. be mindful of what are the things that makes you collect those red flags. Look at them and say, you know what? Why do I keep collecting these red flags? What is it that I'm missing? And then don't ignore it. And, you know, and, and that's something that hopefully we can get. We gave you some of the things to talk about or even to think about that can help you on that journey to say, you know what? DUI, dishonesty, unresolved baggage. And incompatible values. And, and how do you deal with unresolved trauma? You need a therapist. Hello. It is okay to love Jesus, be black, and have a therapist. Because sometimes 
you need somebody to help you navigate and dig there. up and unearth and be confronted with, baby, you done had 25 bad relationships. It's only one you. One common denominator. And so, and sometimes it takes somebody else who doesn't know you to say that. And so we need to get rid of the stigma of, well, I'm a believer in Jesus and I speak in tongues and I go to church. I ain't going to no therapist. Sometimes we need Jesus, medication, and therapy. And that's okay. Because sometimes the things that have hurt us are so deep and we've buried them so into so far into us that we just think, oh, that's normal. That's how everybody is. Everybody is looking for red flags. No, everybody is not looking for red flags. I'm giving a thumbs up because like she's like you said in here, you got your list and those red flags can help you dodge bullets. They can. They can. That means you're paying attention to the things that you see. You know, and, and be mindful and be praying for that person to come across your path. That is not a red flag. That is something that can be, help you just navigate life. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. And, and the reason why we want to do this, because sometimes we can be unrealistic. Sometimes we can only look for the negative. And, and sometimes the reason why we're like that, sometimes it's because we have a uh, introverted, pessimistic personality Sometimes it could be because we spent most of our life. There's reasons why we are the way. Some of it is the way we're bent and wired. And some of it is because there's things that we still haven't really dealt with. And so sometimes it's not ready to date. It's not time to date. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need to date you. And when Gil was talking about, we believe that dating is preparation for marriage. I believe that you should date like a spouse when you're single. Because dating is forever. It's not just when you're single. You should date for the rest of your life because guess what? Mm -hmm. We still date each other. And so it's teaching you how to date like a spouse and not date like a side chick or a side piece as a man. Because if you're going into the date, giving away the most valuable part of you, that's not going to produce longevity. Yep. You want to give them, you, you want to discover and get to know and 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 be honest. And like you said, and, and don't ignore the red flag. But if you immediately become physical, you're not going to be able to be sober. Because that may be a red flag for you. Yeah. Or you may be a red flag for them. Yeah. So. So we hope you guys got something out of this Saturday Night Live with we the Rich Relationship Refuge. We appreciate you guys, even the comments and the chats Thank and all you. the things. Thank you. And for sharing and for um, liking, leaving comments. We appreciate you guys. We actually, the, the podcast will be up on Monday for this. And we are just grateful that you guys are a part of our community. We are so grateful we get to serve you guys because we know, like we said, we didn't have this. We didn't have anybody we can go to. We didn't have anybody we can talk to. And so for you single people looking for a safe place, we are here. So pay attention to them red flags and also understand the, the traumas that you have. And hopefully we've given you some things to think about that could actually help you navigate. And this. if you look in the show notes, we have more details. We have scriptures and oh, we see. have more. Um, it's more written out. So and then our blog is up at richelatiorefuge.com as well. And our app, if you have an Android phone, please, ma'am, please, sir, go to the app store and download it. Because we actually put out a daily devotional. And this whole month is geared towards singles. And we're going to alternate between one month will be all the devotions will be for singles. The next month, it'll be for um, married couples. It'll be for engaged couples. So throughout the year, we're going to have a daily devotion because we realize you need something every day to help you stay anchored. And for us, that's reading the Bible and prayer. And so we're going to make that available. So it's already up on the website and it's on the app as well. So we appreciate you guys. Remember guys, we are stronger together. And we love you and you are more than enough. If you have questions, please reach out to us at richrelationshiprefuge at gmail.com or at helprichrelationshiprefuge.com or go to our website at richrelationshiprefuge.com and we love you and we're so grateful we get to serve you. You guys are the best part of our community. We'll see you guys next week. No, we won't see you next week. Oh, yeah, we won't be right. live next week because one of our couples is getting married. So, we so we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna have the Jeffersons next week. All right, it won't be us. See you guys. Love you guys. See you guys right. week after next. So guys, we have a new way to serve you. Um, we have a mobile app. Yes, we have a mobile app. So if you have an Android phone, right now it's in the Google App Store because we want to be able to have you guys to have help at your fingertips. We want to be able to be in your pocket. 
we because so many times we go to different places we go to apps to find a mate we go to apps to date we need to go to apps to learn how to be the best version of ourselves before we find a mate we need to find ourselves before we get a divorce we need to make sure we have a good understanding of where we need to change so our app is called rich rr marriage mentors please go and purchase it it is seven dollars and 99 cent yes seven dollars and 99 cent and it helps us to help other couples it helps us to take care of all the all the things and so it is such a feeling of just gratitude because now we have a place that's ours y'all it's ours. It's our place. It's our little place that we can come and meet and connect and grow and help each other. So go to the Google App Store, Rich Relationship. It's Rich RR Marriage Mentors and purchase it and tell your family and friends and leave us a review. Let us know what you think about it. So thank you for listening. Thank you for your investment in time. Remember to subscribe to the show and hit the notification icon to be notified when new episodes are posted on the podcast platform that you're listening from. Or you can always find us on our website at richrelationshipsus.com or our YouTube channel, Rich Relationships with Gil Renee. If you found this podcast helpful or you think it could help someone that you know and care about, please pass it along and share it with them.